Hi class, Dr. Warren here, and I just want to give you a heads up on weeks three and four, okay? You're kind of at that point, and I just want to, um, you know, you've done your learner review, you've had them come in and you've done the usability test where you, you watch them and they talk out loud as they go through your course, and then they've also filled out that learner review form. And then in week two, you completed that really big nine page um, matrix where you scrutinized your course just like an online educator would do, okay? So you've got all this data now that you've learned about your course. In week three, you're gonna pull it together and evaluate it. So here's what I want in the two assignments for week three. In the adding implementation and evaluation stages draft, what I want you to do is submit your, um, your usability notes, the notes from your usability test with your students. So if you want to take a picture of them and put them into a Microsoft Word document, save them that way and submit it, that would be fine. However you want to get it to me, if you have to email it to me, that's fine, let me know. And then you also are submitting the learner review form where your learner went through and evaluated your course using that matrix, you're submitting that. If you want to also resubmit your QOCI, that big nine page document, you can submit that in week three. Basically, that is all your data, your evaluation data. That's the data you used to, uh, you used to evaluate your course. How did my course do? Did it flop? Did it, did it succeed? Where are things that I need to fix? So then you submit your data in the draft, and then in the final for week three, you're gonna evaluate that data. I wanna see like a page and a half of you thinking through the, the experience. And here's my questions for you. What was it like to have a learner in your course? What was it like to do that usability study? What was it like for them to kind of review your course? Were you nervous? Did you learn a lot? Was it, was it a surprise to see your course through fresh eyes? That's the first question, okay? Second question, what was it like for you to use that elaborate QOCI rubric to evaluate your own course? Did, you, did it have things that you didn't think about? And, and again, some things that maybe were not appropriate for your course because it wasn't a college course, right? So talk about using the QOCI rubric and kind of scrutinizing your course from that perspective, right? Then I want to hear about the, um, what did you learn from your learner that you didn't think about? And what did you learn from the QOCI that you didn't think about? So separate those out. I wanna, what did you learn by seeing, having those fresh pair of eyes on your course? What, and uh, not just about your course, what did you learn about your course? No, what did you learn about having a learner in your course? And what is that gonna be like when you teach that course? Now you're gonna have, you know, eight eyes on your course and looking at it in that way. What is that gonna be like? How does that feel to you to have learners in your course? And then what did you learn from this whole understanding of the QOCI and the way that people review courses and kind of create how the QOCI creates a, um, an academic standard uh, for what an online course should be? And you know, kind of thinking about that whole metacognition of the QOCI. And then you're going to um, also tell me, so you're going to think about the process from a, a higher perspective. You're going to think about the process from your own experience. You're going to tell me what you want to change in your course. And you're going to, um, I guess that's it. Tell me what you want to change in your course and why. Okay, your rationale. All right? Or what you don't want to change in your course and your rationale for that. So that's week three. That's the final for week three, at least a page and a half, you guys, okay? Week four, we have a blog, and it's called The Importance of Iteration. And of course, I didn't write this because it's super confusing. Create your philosophy. So I don't care about a philosophy, but what I really want you to think about is the word iteration, which means doing it over and over and over again. And that's what you've been doing with your online class. So you, you go in and you add some more content, and you think, huh, I need to change my learning outcomes, right? And how many times did you guys change your learning outcomes because you realized that they were not quite going the way that you wanted them to go? And then how many times did you go in and rewrite your final assessment or another assignment in the class or rewrite the lessons or fix links? Iteration, going in and fixing it, making it better based on 
what you're learning as you go, okay? So why is iteration important in course design? What does it mean? And, um, you know, how you have to kind of have patience about, well, okay, now I got to go back and fix that and change that. So what is that experience like in terms of the evaluation process and going in and updating your course and so forth? So that's what that blog is about. That's what we mean by iteration, okay? And then in week four, you're going to submit your, um, your link to your course and tell me what updates you made. So submit a link, but also please include the updates that you're making or that you want to make so that um, I can kind of think through and it, it will connect me to your week three and what you learned in week three. So give me a, at least a half a page in week four along with the link to your class, okay? That's what I'm looking for. Um, and then that's it. So, and I just want to, and if you find that you don't want to make all those changes in week four in your class, it's okay. I'm not really going to grade you as to whether you made those changes, but just your rationale for making them and why you want to make them and how you think that'll make your course better. So if you don't have time to go in and actually make them, it's okay. All right. You can go do that some other time when you get ready to teach your course and that will be fine with me. But just give me a rationale, at least a half a page, what's going on with your course and why. All right, I have another video for weeks five and six. I'll share that with you next week. Meanwhile, you guys have a great one and we'll be catching up. Bye.